I've had my bad times where people told me that you can't be a designer. Like, what are you? Like, you're nothing. I feel that, you know, instead of getting obsessed with the kind of salaries or kind of names you're working with, I think you should be obsessed about the kind of work you'll be doing. You know, there are a lot of comments that come, you are a cricketer's wife, you know, why do you have to work and things like that. I just don't know. Subconsciously, I just don't know my life without work. Marrying a cricketer or not marrying a cricketer has its own pros and cons. It's been not a very smooth journey on terms of social media. You really felt like, why am I even here where I am? Yeah, I mean, every first of every month has a moment after. <laughs> then when I have to pay the bills. <laughs> Welcome to the Beyond Blueprint podcast. I'm your host, Akhilesh Chitlankia. I'm the third generation entrepreneur from Deeropply Industries Limited, where I serve as the executive director and COO. Through this podcast, our aim is to uh, demystify the architectural and design space in India. I hope you like the content. If you do, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. More great content coming your way. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Beyond Blueprint. And today uh, with us, we have the ever beautiful Sachi Rana. Um, Welcome Thank to the you. show. So Sachi, tell us a little bit about yourself, your childhood and what got you into this space and how life's been for you. So I've been born and brought up in the family of architects and designers, apparently. Everybody in my family is either architect or an artist or something to do with art. And I think I've actually grown up uh, amongst the artists. So um, my, my father was an architect, but um, he did not pursue it much. He was there when Baghdad University was being made and other interesting projects that he did. But he came back to India and, and um, he started pursuing his own business. Uh, I think since I was a baby, I have always gone to their foundries. I've seen how wrought iron furniture is being made. And I think my parents have always been uh, closet designers. They've always been every... Um, weekend a house was being changed or something was being moved or some painting was being added. Right. So we, I grew up in a very like a cute 3 BHK house in Delhi. And um, it was, I think my parents have been a fine, um, uh, I would say an example of how every week my design was changing in the house. <laughs> you have a specific memory from childhood that really sits very well with you, uh, incident or anything like that? Actually, yes. So, um, it's been very long. I think I was uh, 10 and my uh, brother must be 8. And uh, we wanted, we saw this new artwork. We, we didn't know it was called a wallpaper. And we wanted that wallpaper in our house, in our room, in our bedroom right. that time. And um, the interesting part was, I don't know what happened and why that wallpaper must be expensive or why was it not procured. My dad painted the whole wall with like a cloth. And it was, that time we didn't have a phone and we didn't have the camera phones to document it. But I have a very vivid picture of that, uh, that artwork that was done on the wall. It was, it was like a cottage that he made. He made with the fences, he made, and it was very detailed. Not detailed, I would say, not like detailed in a way that, you know, I could see the faces of the chicken, but they were symbolically very detailed. Right. So there were chickens, there was a hut, there was a cottage, there was a river and the typical oh. childhood paintings that we've always been making. Right. So I have a very vivid memory of that in my bedroom and it was there for a very long time. Wow. So I think that's where my love for something on the wall started. I just feel any space without art is completely not done. <laughs> It's incomplete. <laughs> and then how did you get into this side? Uh, college, kya hua, how did I, uh, I was in Sushant School of Design and I went there for diploma. I did not go there for um, uh, anything. Like I wanted to see like what am I trying to do? I wasn't sure that whether I want to go for architecture or designing. Right. But then I started interning very young. I started interning right after my 12th standard. I worked at very interesting place. I worked at Condé Nast. I interned as an interior stylist with Architectural Digest. And, um, you know, the Vogue and the AD office was together in Mumbai. I worked with uh, Loco Designs and uh, Fab Interiors yeah. is something that I've interned at. So, um, I think from product to furniture to everything is somewhere where I worked throughout my summers. And then I, from diploma, I went to 
uh, go I, I chose the full time degree program and I think my college was fun we had very interesting faculty from all over the world we had italians as product designers we had british architects on board so for me i think my introduction to design has been very uh, unique it's not been like directly autocad and 3d max and things it has been an exploration of design i think i learned the softwares after my college is what i would say yeah. i was i think i've the path was very interesting the syllabus was very interesting for us um so amongst all the places that you worked on the last uh, mm. fab loco yeah which one what did you learn from each one of them specifically and which one has been your favorite stint my favorite has been i think ad because it was an you know it was a new world for me so it was an introduction to a new space i went to mumbai for the internship and um, um i was directly working with the interior stylist and um, that time ad just started it was the first year so i met a lot of people i met uh, uh manju sara ranjan was our editor back then and now i think she's with house beautiful is what i believe so my interaction with everyone was direct and it was something that i enjoyed the most and the key learning from that uh i think i learned to um i would say apart from just incorporating interiors i learned a lot of i got an exposure to how to meet the clients and I, how to meet those people and um, we went to ashwarya nayar's house the one who owns leela so we did their uh, we did a kitchen shoot for them so we did with vicky ratnani and every person was different they had a different liking they had a different uh, even for the shoots they had different inputs and i was just i was a baby and i just sat there and i just listened to them and getting spellbound like oh my god i did this even though i was you know being assisted by a lot of people you know photographers like um ashish and other people all over like the whole team was with me on hands on so i think that's been a lot of learning to even interact with people i think that's a very important skill you just spoken about uh in this field of design and interiors and in general in this whole space of getting people homes done the ability to connect with people to actually listen and understand what their uh true requirements are i would say in their personality that's a very very essential skill and i think a lot of people miss that when they come into this space and then they learn it the hard way I mean I as a designer also like I do not have a very elaborate questionnaire that I want to give it to the clients. So obviously the four people in the house are different and four people even in any space are different. I do a very small drill. I ask them to send me random images of the things that they like. You know it could be of, of you know a nice dress, it could be some detail you saw it somewhere you were traveling, some detail that I can decipher that what is the kind of liking that they have. so i make sure that i don't want to know like what are their choices that's for me to decide right. but i always tell them that you know send me 5 7 or 20 even like random images or something that you you and know what do you do with that you know are we as a team also we sit on it and we decipher like what exactly is this um you know this picture telling us and what is the kind of maybe if it's a it's a dress maybe it's gold and black maybe they like you know the whole combination of something color something which is standing out so we try as a team to decipher the kind of design elements we pick up from the images and that we try to incorporate in terms of interiors per se wow that that's a very interesting insight i have not heard of anyone uh, openly talking about their whole process of understanding uh, what the client likes normally आपको क्या पसंद आता है? है? आपको कैसा चाहिए? आपको कैसा चाहिए? चाहिए? कमरा बट आई थिंक दे नो वॉट दे वॉन्ट बट दे नॉट शो हाउ विल इट लुक सो इफ दे आर हायरिंग अ प्रोफेशनल फॉर दैट थिंग समटाइम्स यू हैव टू कीप अ स्टैंड ऑन इट लाइक दिस इज वॉट इट इज but that is something that we try and do it on a very nicer note you know you remember you saw us this and you went there and that's how it looks so 
I mean, we try to keep it very like, you know, I think that's the game of selling. Otherwise, any designer can do anything. Like, why are we with them? What's a bad day like? Bad day, bad day is like, no, we want only this. And it's not going in. It's something that we don't like at all as a team. And that's, then we crib and we cry. And then we cry, our payments are not done. <laughs> then I'm usually the debt collector. <laughs> it's very rare. The client calls me like, you payment not have payment, take lo. So I think that's our, you know, that's, I think the fun part of having I'm sure you know, <laughs> I know you're the one of the debt collector, apparently. <laughs> so more than designers or business owners, we are the debt collectors. Yeah. So that is, I would say, a tough day. But uh, I think more or less, it's a journey. It's a process that we have to do. Uh, it's a part of our design work only. Yeah. yeah. And what's a good day like? Or what's a best day like? Best day, Hamara Bilkul Sub A1 Gaya. Our project is on time, our deliverables are on time. But I think that moment when we give a handover and when they see the space is something which is uh, something that we can't tell them. Like we can't describe that in words how the best days are. I think the handover time is the most beautiful time. And we know we we know what mistakes we have done, but the client doesn't know. But still, you know that whole feeling of Ki tumhare paise ka lage hai is a good feeling <laughs> and a good good day for us. So we recently uh, gave, a, uh, gave a handover in Hyderabad for a flagship store. And it's been our first project in Hyderabad. Yeah, it's at Banjara Hills. It's called Shasha Gaba. And uh, it's come out to be very beautiful. And we've been coordinating back and forth from Delhi. And we have very limited site visits. So I think... How did you organize yourself? Uh, because LA Hyderabad, as you said, limited site visits. Yeah. Was it a big change in the way you work? Actually, it was. But apparently, it went really smooth. Right. Yeah, it was that I prefer that I am with the client. I prefer that I'm personally there. And the clients over here also prefer the same. The clients are from Delhi. But uh, I think it's it's been a, a very smooth coordination. Right. There have been days when we did not agree with a lot of things and we had our panic situations. But I think overall, it was worth it. Team ke sir, coordination ke sir. On WhatsApp, on calls, on Zoom. Every day we were asking for pictures. You know, this just zoomed in pictures of things and that. And the client has been really understanding. And she has been there on the site a couple of times. And she used to video call us and she used to... Shasha used to just show us and every corner, like she sh uh, she took the initiative of, um, you know, keeping us in the loop. Right. And not like just, you know, since you're not on site, you're not a part of it. No, she gave us the due credits. She gave us the whole, um, she made the coordination very smooth for us. So whenever she was there, I think we were on, always on a video call. Right. Like she's been my FaceTime friend for a very long time now. <laughs> and... Uh... Some of the most challenging, like a personal incident or something very challenging, we really felt, ki, why am I even here where I am? Aisa bhi moments aata hoga. Yeah, I mean, every first of every month, aisa moment aata hai. <laughs> then when I have to pay the bills, and I have to give the rentals and all, like, uh, so. It's not easy, right? It's I mean, a, for everyone, like running a business, it, it looks very glamorous and nice from the outside. But at the end of the day, as a business owner, I guess you have you are responsible for everything. That for happens. everything, for everything, we have all like um, we've come from a very small space. We were in GK two before, and it was a really tiny cubicle. That, and then the COVID happened, and things went down, and stuff happened, and uh, then we moved to this space. Like this very recent that we moved here, and we were still figuring out where to work from. Whether is it okay that I save the rent and get the team home? But is it okay to get the team home all the time or is this going to be not a workplace? But I think that that has always been double thoughts in it. But we are very happy. Like, you know, we are getting good response. We have uh, amazing clients. We're not, um, it's a very tiny team. We are a team of five people right now. And uh, uh, I think uh, everyone has their own role over here. And uh, we do not say that you only have to work on one thing or like one project. We all are in it together. So I think that's been a very hands-on moment for us as a designer. You have 125,000 plus followers on Instagram, right? probably more than that now. Yeah. How has that journey been? Like always in the eye of the public, 
building this social media presence. Uh, that comes with a lot of positives, uh, which I would love for you to share, uh, but also the negative side of being, if there is one, of being. Uh, I think, yeah, there it's, I think for me, social media has always been my uh, documentation place. We've never, um, uh, I would say, never hired someone for social media. And, you know, I sometimes have days when I'm under pressure that, you know, oh, my followers are not growing. And, you know, that brand is so small and still they have more followers than me. And obviously that that is a very pumped up thoughts that everyone probably gets. But right. I think I personally, I if I post a picture, it's more of travel and it's more of my experiences right. that I want to gather and design. And of course me, but it's never, I think by God's grace, it's never... Uh, overwhelm me with sort of like kind of engagement I have or the followers I have and it's happening it's fun it's good because the kind of hatred that we get after yeah. is something which is uh, but why is that why do you think people behave that way I don't know <laughs> I don't know why do they behave but does, it, does it like really make you I did ever like really had a very like negative or profound impact on you Ha, there has been there, there was once and twice there's been like that and especially during the matches and stuff but I mean why do we you know these they, some people have like really have time to make like fake profile and then yeah. they come and they, they abuse and then they just want like probably oh she'll read it so let's abuse her you know the, 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 it's been very weird so I do not do not engage with any sort of Things and there are sometimes that I've replied also. It's not that I'm not. <laughs> I've been like very mean and very cuss, and I've been like, ki tu bhi. <laughs> whatever you wrote, it's you also. But but yeah, but it's not been. It's I think um, uh, when I started the brand, social media was not a part of the brand. I think me as a person and my work was a brand. But now, I think the branding has changed. The whole communication for people has changed. And for me, I, again, she's one person who's sitting right there, who's always pushing me, ma'am, post kar do. <laughs> let's do it. But yes, because I think um, uh, marrying a cricketer or not marrying a cricketer has its own pros and cons. It's been not a very smooth journey on terms of social media. You know, if one match goes down, people stop talking to me. They abuse me. Like, I have team bini team. I've not done anything. It's not my fault. So, so, it's just a part of it. I want to come to this later, but we'll jump to it right now. Uh, about uh, you and Nitish and you met him before he... Be, yeah, he, he was playing for Mumbai Indians right. back then, but then uh, he was he didn't play his debut match right. then. But after... How do you guys meet? We met through my brother. Right. He, they used to play football together. Okay. And uh, he used to stay close by and that's how we met. But yeah, it's been... Yeah, yeah. So, very very long. <laughs> it's been very long. He asked long. you out. Or... He asked me out, but I don't know what month was it or what date was it. We never did our whole mathematics of it. But all I know is I'm his first girlfriend. I was his first girlfriend. I'm his wife. I was his first girlfriend, and um, we got married in 2019. We got engaged in 2018. 2016 was uh, I think he was when we started dating, and he uh, got selected for Mumbai Indians. But did you ever have a, that thought in your mind, the cricketer, young guy, committed to him so early in life? I mean, after a few months. Yeah, that time I was thing. figuring out my own life. I said, he didn't come, so I will come out, right? So I was just on this phase of like, oh shit. But I had no clue about cricket, on a serious note. And I was fresh out of college. And my only, like, I think we connected because every day I used to call him and say, Yeah, Arj, my job is not going to be done. I don't want to pick it. There's so many times. Like, I never paid attention to the cricket side of it. Or maybe he never let me do that because I didn't know. I was in complete denial of him being a cricketer or him, Oh, today you made good runs. Oh, very good. We made good <laughs> runs. Oh, today you played well. His mood bhi theek hoga. So we never, like, really touched on that topic on because it is a lot of. In depth cricket is and, very. And now how? It? It's the same. You still don't follow as much cricket, or? I go for the matches. Huh. I attend his matches. I attend his um, 
domestic matches also right. at times because I have to. He's been away from home for a very very long time, so I go and catch up with him. Right. But um, cricket is a part of our life, like a very important part of our life. But it's I would say that uh, it's not the only thing at home. So at home, he doesn't even watch cricket. Like he watch football and stuff. So he plays FIFA, and so we don't have cricket. Like it's a cricket-free zone at home. <laughs> I think we have enough going on grounds and all the fights and everything. You have a lovely painting. Oh yes. So um, there's a story uh, behind this as well. Uh, I'm I'm currently designing Shubman Gill's house, and uh, they uh, this is a mock-up of a small painting that. We are enlarging it to 30 feet. So we are 30 in feet. 30 feet. So we are seamlessly had a, a canvas made and uh, it is super detailed and we have to put it up on the ceiling. Right. Yeah. So I think. Um, this is his choice, your choice? I would say both. It is both our choices. Like uh, Shuman has been a lot into art apparently. He's, uh, he gives me, and sometimes we fight also, like, aise acha lagega, aise acha lagega. but I think it's been a part of the art journey. Rest, in terms of interiors, has given me a free hand of what we should be doing in things. But um, I would say it's a mixed choice of uh, for both of us. What's the process of getting a painting like this done? Um, we have close to seven uh, painters on board for this thing, for a right. painting like this. Um, we call it a Renaissance art. Uh, this is something I think. Uh, uh, this is a travel story for both of us. You know, he went to UK. He saw a very beautiful painting in the museum. He clicked a picture. I was somewhere in Switzerland, and I clicked a picture of the painting that I saw. And then we tried to mix it up. So I wouldn't say it's anything to do with the uh, Picasso or um, any other artist, but but it's a mix of everything. So the five painters are on board for this thing. They are based out of um, Lucknow, and uh, we we've been very hands-on with them. We've been in touch with them regularly. Already been in touch with them through my parents. Right. Yeah, through my parents, it's, they've been um, working with my parents for a while. Right. So it was a mock-up. We got some other samples made, and it turned out to be nicer. And then we uh, got them on a boat for a very big like this project, which apparently. So we've seen the whole spread of the 30 feet canvas. So we got it at home, we spread it, we saw how it's gonna look. So it's, I think by uh, next month we'll get it ready. And I hope I can document it and I can put it up. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Yeah. What a pot. So you, so the thing that I take away I have from your social media, uh, especially Instagram stories that you never went to Instagram to build a followers. It no. just happened. It just happened, yeah. And, and I think, uh, a lot of people today want to make it happen, right? They want the, they want, they're chasing the followers. Yeah, that has been there, and I think, um, I think me and Nitish together are also somehow on a uh, similar lines in terms of social media. Right. We've not been. I think we're just putting it uh, because we like it. Right. And I enjoy traveling a lot. Like right. there's so many countries I went, there's so many museums I've seen. And right. I just want to safeguard those things and those memories that I've seen. When did you realize that, oh crap, I have a lot of followers and this is becoming something. Did that ever realization ever happen? Uh, not really. I mean, I lose followers also. <laughs> but if I'm know, not, but yeah. I, I, Probably when you cross 5,000 or 10,000 or is there a benchmark or a particular number that you hit and I was like, okay, this is getting serious. Uh, I think I I feel that there, there, there are certain uh, pictures or there are certain reels, I would say, and I don't know how to make reels. I just do it. Right. And there's certain, like there are certain numbers, say like 1 million people have seen it. So I just feel that, you know, I have a platform to reach to so many people, like reach out to like a million people and show them like, you know, this is what we're doing, this is the kind of work we're doing. And um, maybe it's not the right way to run an interior business apparently, but Why at least, you, you know, everyone has their own ways. Right. We don't we don't follow like a 10 to 7 thing. We don't follow, uh, and sometimes I want to, 
like be very strict with them and then then i'm like no let's just have coffee and you know if i can have creative blocks everyone can have creative blocks so it's not a very orthodox kind of places that i have worked like you know you have to punch in punch out at 7 and things like that so we run as a um, a very young team like a very different team what are the three or four things you would want people like three key learnings or three key lessons you want to give to the audience uh, especially a lot of young designers coming into this field who want to build that type of following that you built on instagram yeah just document the things you love you know even if it's a picture of a flower or something that you really passionate about because i think people really want to see the real you yeah. yeah everyone knows that how you look when you're all dressed up but what if what what is it when you dress down right and um i think my instagram has known i've i've never put a thought over it i've never said that mera grid acha lag raha hai yeah the color i'm putting is good or no but i think i've put all the data of the things i love right i recently posted shamelessly about my travel to turkey and you know the things i saw and the monuments i right. i saw because that's something that i'm really passionate about like my itinerary if ever i'm going has to be some sort of museum or some sort of history attached to it because i think um, i want to see what people have already done what people are actually has lived through anything that has a story to it and that inspires you at work and that definitely inspires me at work and and not just in terms of architecture because i'm a, i'm from that background in terms of fashion like you know i would want to own a alexander mcqueen piece you know i know i can't own it from the <laughs> from the runaway thing but of the rack if i can just to see and just to feel like how and what process he's actually been following so i'm really like i've i've been really passionate about the stories behind the design right yeah so uh, that has inspired my work a lot so any particular project that is very very dear to your heart uh, that you want to talk about and share like what what about it so dear to your heart so recently um we as designers have always been designing um you know furniture for a lot of clients yeah but that is to a per se interiors so recently we have uh, uh designed something for our own self so we these are the three chairs that we have just come up with it's a capsule collection and um the whole thought behind these chairs is like if you have a couture piece for you know your wardrobe like why do you not have it for your space so um uh these i took me like i think two and a half three years to find the vendor who can make it for us to design to figure out the ergonomics and when it came i was really very proud of myself i don't know how it looks to a third person but i think the whole process of it we've tried to incorporate uh, parametrics which are very coded uh, things but um, not been practiced in india much yeah uh, it is handmade it is with a material which is uh, which is bronze so eventually with age the price of the chair will automatically increase and figuring out the maquettes the ergonomics has been a major challenge and i think we have lost close to uh 30 vendors who wow. said that we want to make it but they in the end said like we can't pull it off it's not possible it's not possible and we even tried in dubai we tried contacting somebody some vendors right. even in dubai that you know if you can just do it for us you have the factory we tried in china and apparently we found someone in um in delhi itself uh who did it with us and i said like you know i'm going to be with you right. and let's just see how is it looking yeah uh my house has always been like filled with art so um when nitish and i got our first house as well we it's just art so i'm i have art from ngma i have the real piece from which is kept in ngma wow. and it's been um uh my prize possession my parents cultures right. and uh, so i feel like you know art is a very necessary thing you need in house right so these chairs were actually kept in mind for that purpose and i definitely inspired by i was inspired by the fashion designer mcqueen i really i enjoy his work i've seen documentaries on him i saw his uh, runway collection i saw um 90s music on so work kar raha tha so i was really like 
I've seen the process because he's not from a fashion background and suddenly he became a very famous fashion designer. So it's been very inspiring for this collection per se. Three years. Yeah, three years. <laughs> three 20, years. 30, 30 vendors, right? 30 vendors. 30 More than 30, 30 vendors. 30 vendors. Yeah. Persistence. But I wanted, I wanted it in the same material. I didn't want to, uh, you know. But why didn't you want to? You know, a lot of times people say that nahi hona to chhod do na kuch aur pakad lo. What about this was so? What made you so determined? He, you know, I mean, going vendor after vendor after vendor over a period of time. At some point, the thought must have come. He let it go. Yeah, oh. there were a lot of time like we had our you know, place where we actually gave up and we were thinking that, you know, we shouldn't be doing this. Right. Uh, but I think um, after a few days, we were like, nah, yeah, let's just do it again. Let's just see like what is going wrong. What is the thing that we can't figure out? What is the thing that why can't we just do it? If we, you know, make such lovely things and why is this not possible? So I think it's been uh, an episode unlock for us. That now we know like we can do this. We we are um, and actually more than um, uh, say the whole design, the process of not just so people will just see it aesthetically. Yeah. People will just see like oh it looks very pretty and that's the cost and we can you know put it in our space. We can put it for that. But actually we saw this on a very different thing. Like why can't we work with that material? What is the the you know we are in a country where there is no dearth of labor yes. and handmade things and the uh, art and craft and all then why not this like why are we going to other places to actually procure things and we are just constantly as a team we are just on a denial to sell it it's just kept <laughs> it's just there <laughs> in my studio in every you corner you must get the name out the product out so, uh, yes, we are thinking of doing that. So, uh, one of the pieces we are actually, uh, you know, one of our clients has actually bought it. All right. Yeah, so that's a smaller one. But uh, we still, we so it's, it's been a very long journey for us to give up so quickly. <laughs> so, from designing, because um, Shruti was a part of this thing. And um, we, we just sat and we said that, you know, we should just do this. And she's like, Ye kaise hoga? I said, figure it out. Kaise hoga? <laughs> and then since then we were just figuring out together like Ye kaise hoga? <laughs> but um, I think in the end we were really happy about it. And we got a lot of appreciation from our, you know, uh, people even from this background who are architects and designers, you know, they said, like, how did you do it? Like, this is beautiful. Because I know, I feel like they know the journey because more than clients, like they are the people who know the journey of it being made. Pushing the boundaries. Or pushing the boundaries for it. We had an option to, you know, just make it in uh, wood. Wood may as a look nayaga, but we were very sure. So we did the whole drill. We made it out of clay. Uh, we figured out uh, with maquettes, we figured out the ergonomics. And then from clay to plaster to POP to resin to molds and rubbers and then bronze. And then it was crafted like. It was crafted underground and then it was bought up and then it was welded and then it was like, I you think it's been a photographs go. of each stage of the process? Yeah, we do. Please share that with us and yeah. make it part of the... Of course. And uh, I think we, we do have, we do have a lot of images that we thought ki ab to gaya. <laughs> Iske baad nahi hoga, this is the last image. So every image for us was the last image for the, for the product that we were trying to do. But I would just... I was just, I mean, we as a team were so confident that we will Even though like we were turned on by a lot of people. Like, a lot of people. But now we have figured out our way. That's amazing. Yeah. Where do you, what's the source of this amazing energy that you have? Where does this uh, larger than life persona come from? Like, have you figured that out or it's just there? Yeah, so, uh, I think, um, I call this my happy space. And I call everywhere where I'm working and I'm designing and I am um, sitting with my, you know, the tiny team and we're always on coffee and chai. You want chai? No? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're always, so, uh, you know, that this is like my one place and I, I stay very far from my studio. It's a two hour drive one way. So, uh, Wait, what? yeah, it's, I stay in Mortal Town and I, it's a two hour drive one way. 
so really? yeah and she's constantly my team is on call and shruti is always on call ma'am abhi ye email bhej do abhi ye kar lo so ah. i think we're working on a way also right and apparently i've got a, a car which is my truck which is just with my samples and my things so i call this a very happy place i think whenever i'm traveling also no i look back and i just say no i, I miss work like right. i don't know my life without work right. so i think i got this from my dad my dad was a part of it he's been through um, my design journey and uh, i think when he started he learned it um, you know on a very orthodox ways by like hand drafting and all he never understood the idea of autocad and right. things like that and all and uh, you know i used to go to the factory with him and understand like what so subconsciously i just don't know my life without work you know there are a lot of comments that come you are a cricketer's wife you know why do you have to work and things like that. i just don't know i don't i travel as much as i can yeah. uh and because i have a fabulous fabulous people around who can you know take care of my work and every day they send me like ma'am we achieved this and i miss like oh why am i not there <laughs> why am i not there but yes i think uh, because my husband staying away for a very long time so i'm balancing but this is my happy place you know, you travel a lot which place city particular spot anywhere on earth uh, do you like if you want to just go back there again which would, would that be a couple of them and why hmm yeah i think um, i personally went to germany uh my brother stays there my younger brother and um, i think i have explored that country by myself a lot mm. since he was studying in a university and i had a lot of free time and all and i had no specific itinerary to cover back then so i think that is something that i really enjoy i i enjoy to see people how um it said that berlin is the city of um, art and culture and not culture per se but a lot of like art and fashion not culture so uh, i i like to see how people transition from you know being a ceo in the morning and being like a complete party popper in the evening and like you know uh, uh the ruin bars that i discovered for the first time i didn't know the whole concept of having ruin bars amazing huh? yeah so that was something like that was an eye opener for me that oh like you know kahi bhi pee sakte hai this is a solo trip No that that was my solo trip like my brother was there but um I've been there like a um, couple of times there okay. so yes I I explore a lot of places uh, alone there so 2018 before my marriage 2019 I was there 2018 I was there and um, that is a place that I can I can I can go back though it's a very gloomy I would say um, you know they have had a very tough history and things yeah. like that and all but there is this one uh, monument um, I went it was right across my brother's house in leipzig where uh what's his name hitler gave his first speech and it's a massive monument like it's huge and uh you have to really trek to go up and i just kind of felt little uh like i just felt like you know this is here where he brainwashed the whole yeah country and the the world you know how empowered do you uh, like feel on being on top or like that so i think those were the histories that i was just imagining myself being there and you know not being a part of it though but like <laughs> as a third person <laughs> as a third person yeah so um i think that is that is one i think germany is something i can always go back i've done 30 trips to dubai uh, but that's been for work and now i can be the local guide of dubai <laughs> i have attended design weeks in dubai that i really enjoy like i personally it's been i've been going since 2018 so i like to see like how everybody from the world are coming and they're showcasing their world thing for right yeah i've never attended a uh, milan fair to be honest oh, really? no i've oh, gone milan course. for shopping oh. yeah but <laughs> not got <laughs> so um I've been going to Milan for work since 2012, so a lot of opinions come from Milan. You have to. Uh, yeah, so I think it clashes some... with my uh, IPL time. So yeah, so we're always there in April. Yeah, April. So you need to take out four days. Yes, days. I've been I've been told I've been told by a lot of people like you're missing your games and you're going, but I think that's a very little time that I get to spend with him. But yes, of course, now a coffee time will be my day. 
तो आई वुड लाइक टू गो बट यार इनफैक्ट लाइक आई सो लॉट ऑफ वर्क फ्रॉम देयर इन दुबई इज वेल सो आई सम ऑफ फील लाइक आई एम नॉट मिस आउट वेरी मच आई एम इन लूप विद लॉट ऑफ पीपल हुआ देयर यू नो माई लवली वेंडर्स हु गॉन देयर एंड स्टफ लाइक दैट नॉट But yes, it's it's in my list. It's not about the work that you've missed out. It's just to see how, in one week, the whole furniture space just comes alive from across the globe in Milan. And uh, my first experience with uh, the Salone Furniture Fair was in 2015. Okay. And it blew my mind apart. Right. Um, so I personally knew what interior design and architecture and stuff like that was and how. It, Homes are built and spaces are created, but then when I went to Milan in 2015 for the first time for the furniture fair, it was an eye opener into this so much possibility that doesn't exist in India, and I'm so happy to see that there have been Indian manufacturers who are now building the quality of furniture that's available in Europe. Right. So you've been really convincing. Yeah, now I'm convinced. <laughs> <laughs> I've been convinced. I've been three times. Uh, we go basically. It gives us a sense of what, uh, what's the taste that's happening globally because what's happening there comes to India. Of course. Of course. Right. Of course. right. Yes. Yeah. Nothing like the fashion and design, yeah. like you know how yeah. Italians do. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I've I've been to Milan a lot of times, but for again for, shopping. For shopping. Yeah, I went for shopping, but I've attended Design uh, Week, Dubai Design Week. I, it's it's lovely to see how people from all over the world come in. I've attended London right. Design Week and stuff. So there are a lot of like yeah, this now is in my Milan. Yeah, yeah. Right. akeli jaungi, but I'll go. <laughs> I'll go. Yeah. Lovely. A lot of mistakes at work that you've made. That. A lot. Little bit yeah, about yeah. that, so that you know, people are viewing this show, and I'm hoping it's going to be a lot of young audience uh, who come on wanting to learn about this whole profession. Yeah. And you, um, if they can learn something, right, what to avoid, what not to do, it'll just elevate the whole industry uh, going forward. I think um, I've seen. Uh, uh, I won't say like I'm very old, but like I've still seen when I hire. There's a there's a gap between. Uh, you know what our parents taught us: ki seeko or seeko. Just learn. This is your learning space. The things you don't learn in college is the things you learn during experiences. And right now, I think the the new generation which is coming, they're so convinced that they want certain salaries and they want certain things and they know nothing. So it's very hard to find people who are actually passionate about work and not about salaries. I have always like you know uh, when I was in AD. I got um, I joined like fifteenth um, to some month I don't remember to fifteenth of other month. So I got three thousand five hundred three hundred three thousand five hundred rupees check in two. So I was really upset that you know I'm, I've come to a new city and it's a new place and I this is my lunch money and you know this is so I think but that was something that I was told that you know listen like you need to chill look at the experience and I'm still in touch with those people. they still meet me and they still we meet at all the design events and you know we still on touch on social media we keep sharing work with each other so i feel that you know instead of getting obsessed with the kind of salaries or kind of names you're working with i think you should be obsessed about the kind of work you'll be doing with the kind of people you're uh, engaged with so is something that i've learned a very hard way and i've had my bad times where people told me that you can't be A designer, like what are you? Like you're nothing. Right. And then, oh, uh, you know, I got featured in the magazine. I won't take the name, but I got featured in the same magazine. I was on the cover, and they were inside. So I sent them a picture, like, <laughs> look, I'm here, <laughs> look, I'm here. So I think, but yeah, we understand. Like we were really young, and um, uh, you, you know, it was that. How can they say this and all? But it's. I think it's a part of a journey to to learn and to build. Uh, Sachi, what I hear you saying is that people who come into this space. the one skill that they really need to have that would be persistence and also a lot of passion right yeah. don't chase the money chase the yeah. uh, learning chase experience. the learning yeah i think i think the learning never ends but still like you know you somewhere you should be just you know people fresh out of college they think that they've conquered the world <laughs> so you know um I have this experience as well, right? Um, so we hire a lot of MBA students coming into sales marketing, right. etc. 
and a lot of times they're like oh we have to make site visits we have to go to the office someone is making us wait but i have an mba degree right mere right. ko to laptop ke piche bed ke kaam de do and i'm okay and the real world doesn't uh, work that way you know i during my internship i've even done dishes i yeah, made yeah. coffees yeah we still don't have an office boy per se like we make our own coffees like it's unlimited supply of coffee but we make our own coffee but i think um, and um, when um, i've been to the site i've sat with the labor we've had uh, on site chai yeah. with everyone you know yeah. the the whole thing i think it i have learned more from the people on site with the you know the contractors yeah. and the labors than my own um sitting in college you know sometimes still now like i call my contractor and ask is this even possible yeah ki is plan ke baad ye board lag jayega ye bend ho jayega but you know pata nahi ko hoga na because they have so much experience and they are working with the materials with the labor day and day out yeah so i think that is the gap that i'm talking about so right. this is no hierarchy of what you've studied and where have you studied yeah. from and what you want to do like i really wish i can do my summer school in uk and be there and stuff like that you know but i think for me my summer school and my winter school and all my learning has been through this and when you were talking about the mistakes that i've done in uh, design also i know where i've done like i've acted all smart in front of the clients and things and all but i don't know like i didn't know like how to do what so that is something that i learned on site while the things were happening right. so and just to have that thing that you know no no i cannot be on site i do not want to you know dirty my hands and things like that i think but that's how the whole process is yeah. it is the whole uh, whole uh, what do you want to become right when you realize you've made a mistake right <laughs> client doesn't know it's fine how do you internalize it within your organization so that it doesn't happen again in the future plus see we've lost money also on that thing it's not that uh, i know the things are gone wrong and you know right. it's your mistake it's no so i have lost a lot of money initially on that things on site things that i've done something it did not turn out to be what and yeah. you know we've um we we said no we're not going to charge you for that and we'll redo it and we'll help you fix it and i uh, i feel like the the um uh the contractor and the team and the labor what we started doing is we started talking to them before we provided to the client right. initially and that i'm talking about because i started working really young like i started working when um in 20 uh, 10 was my first internship uh i interned with an architect and that's when i was about to join my college right so i was 17 and 17 or 18 years old and you know i was going and traveling to a to an office and i was just sitting there for like say 10 hours yeah. and reading magazines and understanding what's happening so you know i i could just chill at home and whatever but my dad made me do that so he said that you have no option you have to just be there and you know so my father really pushed me and helped me through the oh, things a very special bond with your father yeah i truly like he was a part of this he passed away due to cancer a uh, Two years ago, so he was a part of design, and he was um, the person who's always told me to be the bigger person, and it's okay to chill and all. Because I think he helped me ground with my uh, with the um, you know the profession that I chose. It was not just he never told me that it's all going to be a limelight and it's not going to be anything. So he pushed me. He told me that it's okay. So he was my damage control in terms of the side things. how you poked up after his passing oh it was really difficult for me it's been i took an off from work i did not work i stopped working and i stopped um, uh, you know designing because i thought that you know it was done with him and things has not been it hasn't been smooth but it's still a journey like then i came back i said maybe this is what he wants and right. this is how it has to happen so it's been a very very i think that is something that i can't cover in words it's been a very long journey it still is actually yeah um, i had this connection with my granddad um, i lost my granddad in 2005 i was 18 and um, 
his past. So I used to resist whatever he used to tell me. Yeah. But what my granddad used to tell me: be focused in life, be determined in life. Uh, you know, you have to be persistent, consistent. And I used to say, uh, huh. whatever. Who could whatever. be? <laughs> and his passing away was when I had one my first shift in life. I don't know for whatever reason it changed things inside me. Yes, it truly does. Like I am with you, and I think you losing that father figure and yeah. something that you can connect with me. And you know, sometimes it is. Um, it's a, it's a new phase of you know. I I never did my taxes. I never understood my taxes. I never took a pain of even doing um, you know. Get tedious, kya hota hai? Like I didn't know. So it was very new for me to get onto another or um, open another chapter of my own life. You know, my husband traveling, my brother being abroad, and my uh, father passing away. So I think it's been a very uh, like. a new phase like you said has been a different phase a different chapter of my life because when he passed away nitish was not in um, he was in um, abu dhabi right for the matches and they were apparently in the bubble so the yeah. covid happened and the team had to be in the bubble and, and they were couldn't. yeah he couldn't travel oh. and and uh, you know i couldn't travel to him just to be with him i had to quarantine for 15 20 days to be with him for three, four days or something like that, you know. So that bubble thing was really um, affecting. We could only be on video calls or on a call or something. So I think that the whole COVID phase and the whole thing just clashed. It just happened so quickly and it just happened uh, so much. So after a very, so that was a phase when I stopped designing, which was new to me because I again like I don't know if I'm not working. Yeah. So um, then we, you know. i pulled out and things like that and all but it was again a new phase of like there a process that you put in place to get out of that uh, low place in life or it just time healed and you move started moving forward i uh, i think more than if you say like apart from uh, uh just design and work and all i was just spiritually very involved it was a very like a um new phase in life that i wanted to discover for a very long time but then it helped me um, with my healing a lot so that is something that i discovered that you know no like this is something that um, you know i should be giving myself a little bit of time to uh, you know understand and grieve and you know understand that what is going wrong with me right. So it's I won't say like it helped me be a woke person or something. <laughs> Nothing well, to do with like woke or chapter. something. Yeah. yeah, but like you know, I started reading a lot of books about like what is um, uh, uh, happening in the quantum physics and what is happening in the parallel world and what is it because I was so dedicated about the fact that I have to find him again right. that it just inclined me to a certain topic which I did not think that it would be a part of my life. any one book that you read that really stand out and you would want everyone that you know to at least give it a go um there is a book which i recently uh, finished called um, the laws of spirit world yeah yeah so that is something that i um and when i was a kid i read this book called many lives many masters and i reread it and I, then i reread it so i've i've read that like 3 4 times now yeah. which did not it did not like um i would say um help me achieve to what i was looking for right. that where is he now what is he doing right. and stuff like that you know but i think it helped me with uh, understanding that there's a world beyond it yeah. so um, if ever and there, then recently there was a time when i was so tired of the self help books that i've been getting <laughs> then i ordered this really like you know mulvine and mistletoe and christmas kind of like rom com books from amazon and i bulk bought them like i literally bought like 25 of them to read i was like no yaar like i'm you know like i'm tired of not being uh, achieving the uh, you know what sadguru says or what osho says or what you know the other spiritual leaders who are you know leading us in some or the other way and like you know sometimes feel like i'm a very bad person i did not achieve this so i said like listen you need to really chill and you really need to get on to your real <laughs> self and get to those romcoms so i've got i've got a very weird books like i i've just got like 
mulled wine and christmas in a palace like it's the book name is that and i'm just reading it so i think i needed that sort of break yeah. from yeah yeah <clears throat> um i read uh, yeah. quite a bit but i get what you're saying yeah if it's a spiritual self help book if i go down two or three books at a time then i just push them aside yeah and what i started doing is mixing so if it's one of this there's one of a biography or a business kind of book still not gone into fiction read mm-hmm. as a child not there all i got this book today i have to check what's the name like it's it's called uh, it's very uh, i don't i've not read it i just got it received it in the morning it's called the ancient science of mantras all right so i'm really curious to know what's happening and what's not happening but um i'm still contemplating whether i have to like read this or should i not read this <laughs> or will it like drown me in my sorrows again <laughs> but yes like i would want to if i could recommend a book and I yes please send one across one some back um the surrender experiment by michael singer okay it, so it's uh, i don't know if you know michael singer or not um he's a spiritual he's a he was a college hippie who was a lost soul uh, went on a road trip to mexico got into meditation okay and life started happening around him and he ended up building uh, the temple of the universe somewhere in florida okay uh, he was the ceo of a multi billion dollar company he was running out of a spiritual center okay and then an fbi raid happened on him yeah and while he was behind bars under investigation he wrote his first book called the untethered soul okay. and then he wrote this book called uh, on the surrender experiment the untethered soul is about uh, mind soul and what happens inside the human body how to deal with that but the surrender experiment was his life story and this whole journey of allowing things to just happen around him and I well i think that's really interesting because i really feel that a lot of spiritual places have some sort of power oh yeah like i um I have been uh, as much as I can like I'm not saying that n- my partner or Nitish is an atheist or something like he truly believes in god but he's not been a very uh, open about his talks about god yeah. so I went to Ujjain I went to Mahakal I went to uh, Kechi Dham and um, I went to a lot of sp- like places in Uttarakhand just to see the temples and everything you know but I feel there is some pull and there is some power and there is some I still question whether there is god or no but like I feel that there is something which is truly like making the world in motion yeah yeah so I do not like I I go to Iskon I go to Vrindavan I I'm I'm really fond of like one day I wake up like I wake up oh I want to go to Ujjain today <laughs> I want to go to Mahakal Mandir and so I am that person but I just feel um and this is the first time that Nitish also went with me to uh, the Shiva temple and i said tu mujhe bata te ko lag raha power hai <laughs> so i wanted that validation he said nahi hai hai so i think i needed that validation but i truly feel that there is something and obviously when you read about that place you actually transport to that yeah uh, uh, that place that you are uh, i will read the autobiography of a yogi yeah i okay i started it yeah and then i left it midway yeah. i've not finished it but so i started it three times You did? Yeah, and on the fourth try, I finished it. See, so I'm um, on somewhere like a yeah, second yeah, yeah. try, <laughs> so I need two more tries. Yeah. Uh, but you know, coming to the space of an, uh, the energy of a place, right? Or uh, temples, of course, because so many people are chanting and it creates energy. I also feel when you walk into a home, when you walk into an open space, yes, there are places where you walk into and it just feels natural. It feels at ease. True. Right? That is. I think that is something that we really take care of um, in terms of interiors as well when we are designing a space in these certain places that we go to a client's house and we feel that you know there's something very gloomy there's something which is pulling us down and it's not just me I have spoken to my you know fellow colleagues and everyone that you know do you feel that this place is like sinking in like you know are you feeling that this place doesn't have that vibe or is it i won't say it's haunted or anything but there's some certain energies because i feel that our, our work is too much to yeah. visit people we are very involved in people's home and their personal lives 
I would know like who's fighting with who. Like I would want you can to sense know. It, right? Yeah, and we sense it also, and also like understand the space, and we have to be so close to the clients that we really need to understand their um, energies and things like that. So that has been very. Um, I think it's been a part of my profession as well. It's been a part of my. Uh, uh i would say that's how we decipher the kind of clients that we are working with as well but talking about the books i went and stayed in uh, pera palace in istanbul right so that is where uh, agatha christie used to stay oh really yeah I know that. and okay. uh, she wrote her book called um, the murder on the orient express right Yeah, so that is where the so uh, like Nitish was really tricked to go to that hotel. Like he didn't know the history and all, but I did my research. I said I want to go. Yeah. Like I was sure that I want to go to this place, and um, we did not stay in her room, but we stayed in the room next door. And um, so uh, one night we were there, and I started narrating the whole story. You know what happened here? Do you know what happened here? No, I was. You you okay? I would love to hear. So. Apparently, Agatha Christie was staying in that room, and okay. she vanished for uh, like say ten, twelve days. Yeah, and she just vanished. Her car was there. She was there, and you know, it is a um, it is a way to the Silk Route. So it's been one of the oldest yeah. hotel, and um, they uh, she she used to stay there and write her books. She vanished, and no one knows like where did she go and what happened. And and one fine day, she just walks out of the room, and she just. Like doesn't draw, go for breakfast where I was having breakfast, and she just goes for a, a breakfast, and you know everyone started asking like where were you like for those ten days and those twelve days like what happened? She didn't say like she didn't talk about it, and then she passed away. Like the whole journey, she didn't speak about the whole situation that happened. Then they called a psychic called Tamara Rand, and they had the newspaper cut cuttings, and they had all the proof and everything. And uh, uh, they started uh, like they called the psychic and they said that you know there's a key on the floor bed, so she time traveled apparently and they found the key, and now I think Walt Disney and I don't know who someone had a fight so the keys were the gov government and no one knows there was a secret behind it. So a lot of people have conspiracy theories and all, and you know they call the spirits on board and stuff, and Nitish was like petrified. He was like. इस होटल में भूत है एंड ही इज राइट नेक्स्ट डोर एंड इज लाइक यू नो यू नो जस्ट डू इट इज लाइक नो लाइक ही डेंट स्लीप द होल नाइट ही वॉज लाइक वॉट द हेल्प वे डिड यू जस्ट गेट मी एंड दे हैव द फर्स्ट एलिवेटर मेड एवर इन द वर्ल्ड सो इज लाइक चल चल लेट्स गो लेट्स गो दैट एलिवेटर एंड ही जस्ट वोक विद आईज इज बिलीव You the next time you say कि यहाँ जा रहे हैं, I think he's going to start. He has no option. <laughs> <laughs> I am his sole travel partner, and he's like, yeah. And next day we were getting an option, so they gave me an option that you know you want to move to that room or something. I was like, yes, yes, it's yeah, of course I want to. And he's like, no, <laughs> no, we're not. We're staying in this room for whatever time you want to stay, but no. Wow. So uh, and is... and the and the hotel people they gave me a souvenir key. Of that whole thing, I got a book. I went to that room. I clicked a picture. He's like, "You're mad." I said, "She wrote this book over here." This still, he's like, "His room is bhoot hai." I said, "Chala gaya bhoot oh, like it just went." That is an insane experience, and thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. Uh, what's the future for Sachi looking like? The next five, seven years. Where do you see yourself going? I think I'll. Still be here designing spaces, <laughs> and I hope I get good clients, more I'm better sure clients. Will, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't think you need to hope for that. I think it's going to happen, right? But I think I've been very, I've, I've been very lucky with the kind of people I've met. They have been wonderful till now. Yeah. I'm not jinxing it. It's been a very, very good journey, and I hope we build better spaces. We, right. you know, we we are currently doing uh, F and B space. That's our. Um, Uh, we are doing after a very long time, like right. post COVID, and we've got a lot of international clients now. We are getting a lot of calls from uh, UAE and UK, and uh, we did certain Airbnbs in UK. So um, I think I'll be still here learning, traveling. You can, if I'm not at work, I'm traveling. <laughs> How do you figure out what you like? Like um, you said, F&B, Airbnb, homes, 
what's your personal preference and why anywhere where there's a lot of art i would say yeah i am a very i'm a person that you know uh, people have now started coming up with a topic that you know our brief is like it has to be very instagramable but if you have something really pretty behind you it will automatically be instagramable so i think my fnb spaces have been my favorite for now it's quicker and you have more space to um, uh just experiment with a lot of things you don't need to give justification of what you're doing and why yeah so it is the space and the vibe that we have to create so that has been my personal favorite till now i think i really enjoy it but i don't enjoy doing office as much and if you ever get a chance to do a project in an area that is little bit haunted or like, <laughs> would you be saying yes to that project <laughs> 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 anything that has history to it i think i i am on it and um, i think we have covered history, right? I, i love history i've been a sucker for art history i've been i read a lot of paintings like i like to read about and about the paintings and you know i um, i think my college gave me that i would give credits to my college we did i've been obsessed with frida kahlo and i have a painting which has to be framed and which is right there got frida kahlo made I all I love her um, aesthetics and I like the you know what she went through and things like that you know I've read a lot about it there's a painting called uh, La de Moselle Avignon it's by Picasso okay. so I read that for 3 years so yeah I decided for then created something out of it so it was during my college so it was a small project that we got but then I took it forward for a very long time because I started enjoying the whole uh, I think the the drill that was given So I went to Ephesus and I saw the you know the history uh, of the space and the kind of uh, it was where the first human race started coming in. They they have dwelled a new city. Right. They have found the bedrooms. They found the mosaic. Yeah. They found the boards and things that were being used. So strange to see like the first century people like actually walk through yeah. on that marble yeah? and I have amazing pictures of that um, in front of it and how people actually had that sort of liking. their fashion their jewelry their utensils it was all kept there um, even in jordan i went to petra you know i saw like they just build the whole city without an architect like it's it's insane it's it's unbelievable the kind of uh, details they had they had no autocad they had no 3d they had nothing and still it was the trust on the people who were building it yeah and and you look at uh, why petra you look at india the forts the castles that oh block it's insane yeah. right it's, it's, it's insane yeah it's yeah. You're, so i i just feel like you know if if those people can trust those labors you can trust us with our design <laughs> you can just Absolutely. trust us eventually ki hum bana denge acha kuch but i think the it's yeah so i just like like how at least one piece in your house should be something which has a history to it so um anything it could be your tapestry or something that i would want to give to my future 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 children and leave it for them but i think i have a lot of art at home that's a piece by my mom that's a first piece uh that's bronze and i have these are all my travel collectors a little little that i pick up from wherever i go right yeah so i'm a hoarder <laughs> i have shelves <laughs> No, oh, it's amazing, and I really love the fact that you found your true love of art and history. Yeah, and you found it a way of weaving it into the design. design. Yeah, and um, and I think the clients who really are looking for something like that, uh, you are yeah. the go-to person for them, right? I um, I actually collect a lot of lot of things. Like I feel like it's it's your treasure. I have this dress from Givenchy, which was his first collection. when he was nothing like he just had a small boutique in in paris and um, and uh, like you know he was one of the side wala tailor that you know he's making some clothes and stuff not a tailor but like making someone right. like someone making clothes and all so i have like a dress like a velvet dress it doesn't fit me because it's too big for me but i just i've just kept it i've not told nitish that i've spent so much money on it but i've just kept it it's just there in my thing so i feel like you know you know i don't know like who must have worn it like maybe marlon monroe has worn it so i like to collect things which has some story to it and i'm sure like our families indian families have a lot of such things in their homes i'm sure oh, yeah, like yeah. you from your yeah, yeah. everything I, yeah 
एक्सेप्ट फॉर ज्वेलरी हाँ माँ के कंगन को छोड़ के कैमराज